Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, our project today is this. And no, it's not missing a leg. I love this because it's got three. It's a three-legged side table. And it's got these great floral patterns coming down the legs and some decorative trim here. So it's going to be super cute. What I want to do is I want to do a couple of different aging techniques. So we're going to be doing multiple layers on this. We're going to be highlighting some of this later. Um, but we're going to start with perhaps an unexpected color. Uh, we're going to start with peach. Now, there is no peach in the DIY line. So we're actually starting with petticoat pink. And let me show you here. And with all things, if I'm mixing colors, I mix them first. So what I started with was petticoat pink and cowgirl coral, and not much of this to be able to mix together to get this lovely kind of peachy color. The, pink, the cowgirl coral, too deep, um, didn't work adding white to it. I needed to have that little bit of undertone for what I was going after. So we are mostly starting with a base of the pink. And then, and this is almost empty, so it's a good thing I don't need a lot. Otherwise I'd be, oh my goodness, I just had you open. How could you be stuck? Literally, I just had it open. Okay, and there's not much of this cowgirl coral left in here. So, literally, a couple of little dribbles. We really aren't going to need much. All right, so I'm hoping there's a little, a couple of dribbles more. We really are at the dregs of this bottle. All right, let me finish. So a little light. I'm gonna get some water, add a little bit to this, shake it around, and get the last little bit of goodness out of this, into this to deepen it, and then I'll be back. All right, I've got my paint mixed up. And it's this deeper kind of soft peachy kind of color, which is really quite lovely and just pretty much bang on what I've done. I am simply going to take, so for the first, before we start anything else, I need to get my paint on. So I'm going to want to have two solid coats of paint onto this because we're going to be doing some light washes and I don't want... Um, I don't want to end up getting down to bare wood as I'm doing the washes. So I want to get on two decent coats. I'm using my Klingon S50 brush, which is awesome. Paint, brushes, they're available on the website, queenbeecreationshome.com. But I'm gonna to wanna to get, and this has lovely soft bristles to be able to get into, down into those grooves, be able to get all of the details covered. So, two good coats on here, and then we'll be back and start doing some of our aging techniques. We have two coats of our kind of peachy blush color painted on. Now, for those of you that are freaking out saying, hey, I don't like that color, recognize that this is our base. And the technique that I'm doing, I wanna have some brightness popping through the other layers. So, the next step may be a little bit unusual because we're still gonna be adding paint. But this layer, we're actually, actually gonna wax the whole piece. I don't want a lot of my next layers, which are going to be uh, more liquidy washes. And we're going to be using a technique called frittage. And I don't want to be inadvertently wiping this color away. I want this color 
to sort of be peeking through what we're doing. So I wanna protect it. And I'm gonna put some wax on, which, you know, as you can see with the DIY paint immediately brings out some of the richness of that color. So I am going to wax this whole piece. I'm gonna wipe it down, get the excess off, and I'm gonna let it dry just slightly so it doesn't have to dry overnight regardless of whether I end up having to do that since I'm working in the shop. If I get busy doing other things, then these projects just get left behind. But I'm going to get this all waxed, I'll wipe it down, and then I'll leave it for an hour, okay? Um, you could leave it longer if you want to, need to. But I just want it to dry a little bit before we start adding our layers. But ultimately what we're looking at doing is adding some depth and some age to this piece in a way that perhaps I haven't shown you before. So just, you know, I like to, I like to give you... I like to give you new ideas, new techniques, um, new things to think about to put more tools into your toolbox rather than showing you the same thing every time, which doesn't make sense. You're, you want to learn new things. That's why you're watching. So I'm going to give you a couple new techniques today. And one is you can wax <laughs> between paint layers. Um, I know a lot of people will tell you no, but uh, you're gonna see us do it. So there you go. I've changed angles, obviously, so that you can see the tabletop here. And I think it's a better angle for you to see the technique um, as opposed to on the legs, but I will be doing the same thing all over. What we want to do for this is we want to use a very wet wash, not soaking wet, but we want to use a wash. Now what I have here is on my label it says purple blend. And let me explain how and where I end up with these. DIY is a paint that gets reactivated with water. Now sometimes you end up with, um, you end up with, with, you know, little tiny bits of paint in the bottom of your jar. Sometimes you end up with hard paint in the bottom of your jar. So if it's hard, I end up adding a bit of water to it to ultimately reconstitute it. If I add too much water, then I end up with something that's a little bit runny um, and uh, I, I use it as a wash. If I end up with just little bits of paint in the bottom, um, I will add some water to it, shake up the can and uh, and then I may end up doing that with two or three colors and I just dump them together and I end up with a new color. That's where this purple came from. So um, I had some um, blues and some uh, the reds and I think there might have been a pink in here and it just ends up being this luscious purple blend which I really wish that I knew the actual mix of because it's pretty lovely. But what we're doing is we're making a pretty watery mix of whatever color you want. We're going to paint it over top of our waxed top. Um, and again, I just waxed this because I didn't want to end up lifting a lot of my pink up. I wanted my pink to be able to stay there and I didn't want it to all reactivate as I added like a really wet uh, paint over top but I'm gonna paint this very quickly, and then I am going to take a crumpled newspaper, uncrumple it, and lay it over the whole top. So, I'm gonna to talk to you, you're not gonna see me, who cares? Um, but, let me show you the technique. So you can see that some of that is being, is resisted by the wax, and that's okay. Look at how lovely this purple is, right? I mean, so wish, so wish that I knew exactly how to get this. I mean, I could probably duplicate it again, and I will have to do that because it is lovely. But what we're doing is we're applying that 
and then we're laying our newspaper over top and you, you want it a little bit crinkled right just to give a little bit more texture and then I am just rubbing down into it I want that newspaper to absorb some of that paint and then I'm lifting it off this is called frittage look at the texture now I'm gonna let that dry I'm gonna do that over all of it I'm gonna let that dry completely and we're gonna do it again with another color so we're adding texture we're adding some depth and so cool so cool so I'm gonna carry on with the legs which is really awkward for you to be able to see I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna come at you tomorrow with our next layer which is um, a softer purple which is French millinery but you can hear it was like the real dregs of, of that jar um, and I just added water and it's been soaking for a while so we'll see how it's doing and uh, how we can use it so cool this is our tabletop now after that first coat of the cherry picked well not cherry picked but that kind of that purple blend um, frittage has dried now we're going to do it again same thing different color so this one is a wash made from French millinery which you can see is like a very light kind of mauvey color so we're starting to go into softer colors we're still gonna do more after this so anybody that's freaking out about the look <laughs> hang in there <laughs> hang in there we got more to go but we're gonna do exactly the same thing we're going to apply our wash very quickly over top of this that's a little heavier than I want so let's make it a little bit more watery and we're gonna take our crumpled up newspaper lay it all over the top and create a little bit of faux texture and I've got lots of newspaper sitting off to the side here ready and waiting and get ready for a little bit all right so you can see already it starts to dull it down we're still keeping texture in there um, we've got we've got more to go though so again we're just slowly softening it out and uh, I'm gonna carry on and do the rest of the piece let this dry and then come back with our next coat I hope you guys are having fun with this I'm loving it <laughs> okay next coat so another wash and I'm gonna go in on the tabletop. I'm gonna go in, um, I was thinking the opposite direction. I'm gonna stay in the same direction, I think. And this time I have watered down apothecary. So we're going in a slightly different tone because it's the pale green. So really lovely color, goes super great with these colors. I love the apothecary with the French millinery. And we're just softening it out. And we're doing the same thing, same treatment. So we're getting that wash on. So nice and quick. I'm grabbing my newspapers. I save these from everybody that sends me painted things with uh, wrapped up or you know when you're thrifting and they wrap stuff up just so I can use them and you can only use these like once maybe like for something like this that's really wet um, because the newspaper only absorbs so much you can see how full of paint that is there we go. Okay, love that. 
All right, and I'm gonna carry around and do the, uh, the sides and things and let this one dry. All right, we're actually gonna do this one more time. Now, I'm gonna do it with Gravel Road, which is a light gray. And I just wanna mention, I mean, I get this seems like a lot of layers and a lot of futzing, but I want you to recognize that this is taking me less than five minutes to do from laying it on, putting the, the newspaper on, the entire thing. I mean, I'm being generous with the five minutes. It really isn't taking any time. And because the layers end up being fairly thin, it's really not taking a lot of time for it to dry in between. Because I'm here in the shop, it's easy enough for me to get caught up in other things, so I end up with a little bit more time than that. But I don't want you to think that this is particularly onerous or challenging, or oh my gosh, this is crazy. Uh, these are really thin layers. They're going on super fast. It really isn't, um, it isn't as involved as it may seem, if that makes sense. So here we're putting on a light coat of this gravel road. Again, this is very wet. I'm looking to kind of soften the color out a little bit. And again, we're going to do our frottage technique. So we're going to grab our newspapers that are all crumpled up, lay them. I'm going, it's the best way to go here. This is a big, big piece. Let's grab a little piece over here. see how it's all starting to soften I mean it's hard with um, the big uh, lights here in the shop but it's all starting to soften out we're also gonna be doing some techniques with wax <laughs> just because <laughs> why not so I'm gonna do this great coat with everything let it dry and then come back at ya okay next step now, one of the things I did off camera was once that gray coat was dry, I did a really light sanding, which means I took a three, uh, 320. I took a 320 grit sandpaper and I just really lightly went over it just because, okay, there we go. I just didn't wipe that down enough. Just to knock off, not to distress, but just to knock off the highs of the paint, any paint finish gives you, and give a nice smooth finish. Now, this step, we still have more after this. I just wanna put a coat of clear wax on. So of course I'm using DIY, but you can start to see all those colors coming through. And it starts to almost look like you have you know, patterns over patterns, right? That almost like we did stencils over stencils or something. But we start to get these really cool effects as those color layers start to pop. So I am going to get a coat of clear wax over the whole thing, wipe it back, and then I'm going to come back to you for the next step. I brought you down to maybe watch here as I do kind of the next step. We've got our clear wax on. It's still wet, so it hasn't dried. We haven't buffed it. And what I am mixing is a combination of white wax and dark wax. I want to do a little bit of aging, meaning, you know, when pieces get older, they, they almost kind of patina. They start to just brown a little bit. So I want to do some of that to this, but I don't want tons of just the dark of the brown. So I've softened it and made it, I mean, it's still brown, just a lighter brown. And what I want to do is kind of put this 
in a lot of the, the creases and crevices. And it's gonna sit down a lot more on these edges than on um, the tabletop. And we're gonna wipe it back more in the flats. So again, we're making it go darker, really kind of dropping it down. And maybe if I turn this, you can kind of see the difference in the coloring between the two. So see how we browned this out. I'm going to do that to the whole piece. And then we still have more to go. <laughs> you know what? I'm building the color as I go. And really I'm making the decisions as I go in terms of where we're at, what I want, what I need, what I'm looking for. And um, that's not done yet. But I do think that after I add, oh, I got an eyelash in my eye. So I do think that after I add this brown wax, what I am gonna wanna do is leave this to dry overnight, buff it up, and then see what more I wanna add. But. I am gonna leave more of it sitting in some of those crevices. And that's why I'm starting with this section. All right. Our final steps with this project is to add some gold. I'm gonna be using Golden Roll by DIY because I don't want it to be a really harsh gold color um, like I might get with some of the other gilding pastes. So I want it to be kind of soft. I'm going to stencil on the top and you can see that I have this really large, guys, I wish I could tell you where I got this. I can't remember where the heck I got this. I got it, oh my goodness, maybe about four years, five years ago, and I did a raised snakeskin pattern on the top of a coffee table, and I haven't used it since. I kind of forgot I had it. So what I want to do is put this, um, my pattern kind of goes this way, so I want the snakeskin pattern to kind of go the same way and it repeats so I'm gonna to have to add it on here and add it on on this end but I don't want it to be um, solid all the way across so I'm gonna kind of want to do it a little bit heavier around the outside edges a little softer toward the center and then I will also do some gold on the legs but that's kind of in my head what the plan is. Sometimes my head doesn't turn out to be as replicable as I anticipate, but that's what I'm trialing. So I have my Jamie Ray um, half inch stencil brush. So again, golden rule, Jamie Ray stuff, all available on the website, queenbeecreationshome.com. And I'm not going to pounce this so much as just kind of lightly brush it in because then I can kind of control a little bit the look. All right, and this is all I'm gonna be doing on the top and I'll I'll bring you in maybe a little bit close to be able to see some of this. And then I'll do the same when I move on to the legs and the rest of the body. But I'm more kind of looking at getting some patterning across um, around most of the outside.
our piece is now done. And I have to tell you, I have not used golden rule yet. I know it's been out a long time. I just, most of the projects that I used, I used like a gilding wax, which is very heavy and very opaque. This is, it's got a, a, a translucency to it. So it's a much softer look, which turns out to be perfect for this piece. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to capture it in pics, but that golden rule wax over top of all those different layers and kind of that model layers, it almost has that iridescent quality, almost that, that light rainbow effect that when, you know what, when you blow a bubble, right? When you're blowing kids' bubbles and you've got these soap bubbles floating away and the sun hits them and you see that shimmer on the outside and that reflection of, of colors and things, it looks like that. This is cool. Now, you don't have to do like the snakeskin pattern over this. I was just going through my stencils from the perspective of I wanted something that was going to be all around the outside and then less toward the center. And it just was the easiest one that I had that um, wasn't a, a, a major pattern or really definitive florals or something. But I mean, you do you, you do whatever. But I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm loving the effect of this. I think that the softness and that iridescent quality of this, that translucency of this works perfectly with the frottage. And just to create that soft impression, I could see frottage is, is an old technique that was often used on walls. So I could see doing something like that on the wall and then doing like almost like a damask stencil of this over top. Oh my gosh, that would be stunning. So yeah, there's my head going off in other directions already. But um, let me know what you think of the frottage technique. I know in the beginning it looked pretty scary. Hopefully you think that it came together. I really think that this wax was the final touch to really pull it together. And I would not be averse to just waxing this over an entire piece to create this kind of light golden glow. It's just awesome. I didn't realize how cool a tool I had sitting on my shelf. So uh, keep it in mind if you're looking for just a little something but you don't want really a harsh kind of bling to it. This is the perfect, perfect finishing touch and it's exactly what this piece needed. As always, that's my opinion. You guys tell me yours. Share with me your thoughts about this. What you think, if you're gonna jump in and give Frottage a, a try, love to hear from you as always. And I look forward to seeing you on the next time. So until then, take care.